today we will see the concept of void and voidable contract but before seeing the concept of void and voidable let us have some look on the three terms promise agreement and contract what promises as per section 2b of indian contract act 1872 when one person communicates proposal to other person and the other signifies his assent thereto the proposal gets accepted hence accepted proposal becomes promise so in promise there is a proposer who is called promiser one is acceptor who is promisee there is a communication of offer between them when the offer gets accepted promise occurs now in promise there is always a consideration also between the promiser and promisee at the desire of promiser promise is a subset of agreement sets of promises make it to agreement so let us see what agreement is as per section 2e of indian contract act 1872 every promise and every set of promises forming the consideration for each other is an agreement after agreement again agreement is a subset of contract so agreement constitutes to now contract as per section 10 of indian contract act 1872 all agreements are contracts if they are made by the free consent of the parties competent to contract for a lawful consideration and with a lawful object and are not hereby expressly declared to be void here we see some terms which are of significant nature like free consent competent lawful consideration lawful object and declared to be void now let us understand what we mean by free consent if there is a offerer and one uh, there is a acceptor or one there is a promiser or one there is promisee or two either parties when there is a communication of offer between them and there is agreement between them, them if one party is not willing to accept the offer if it is out of his free consent as its literal meaning says that free consent is means who is willing to if he is unwilling if he is doing this under a pressure or any threat then that contract does not take place that is voidable again we see the term competent so who is competent to contract can anybody enter into contract answer is no when either of the parties doing the agreement between them or among them are of sound mind of the competent age or of majority of age have gained the majority age and if they are not debarred by the law of that state or of that subject in that case they are competent for example if a person is of unsound mind or informed he cannot sign a contract if a person is convicted or sentenced or accused in a case of such nature which debars him into signing into any contract in such condition he will not be eligible to do any contract if a person is of uh, 18 years old is not um, 18 years old or less than 18 years Yes, or 
whatever be commensurating with the respective state, the age parameter, if he is not attended that, then he is not eligible to sign into any contract. Again, in contract, there should be a lawful consideration between a promiser and promisee or one party to other party. Means, there should be any legible or legal or any sensible transaction of return between two of them. The sense of return for which any promisor is offering something to the promisee is, be, is to be as such that it should be some meaningful. It should not be any arbitrary or illegal likewise. Lawful object again, with what purpose, with what vision, with what objective, with what the legal objects the contract is being made should be also lawful and again contract for whatever it is being made that should not be already declared to be void by the law Here we see void contracts as this box we see is empty. So in similarly, void contracts are also empty or null with no significance. It is always empty or null or with no significance. It is always ab initio. That is from the beginning itself here void as per section 2g of indian contract act 1872 when an agreement is not enforceable by law it is said to be void when agreements forming contract lacks lawful consideration and object it leads to void contract for example some agreements for example there is liquor ban in some states of India but if uh, two parties meet and agree to open a liquor shop and do the trade of that liquor so from the beginning itself this type of agreement will be null and void because they are not enforceable by law they are banned by the law of that state Again, here we see when agreements forming contract lacks lawful consideration. For this, I would like to cite down a good example of the Shakespeare's uh, play of Merchant of Venice. In that, it was settled between the Shylock and Antonio that if Antonio fails to repay the debt of Shylock on time, Shallow would extract the uh, some portion of the flesh from the uh, very uh, chest of the antenna. So that was a consideration. So extracting the flesh from the chest was the consideration. But is it sensible? Would not antenna die, or it will be very fatal to him? nearly putting him near the death if Salo extracts flesh from him on the non-repayment of the debt on time. So here in return what the Shiloh expected is not lawful. It is not sensible and it is doing his Malified intention also. So, such type of considerations are unlawful, illegal, and hence the agreements 
lead to void contract. Section 23 of uh, Indian Contract Act, we see that the consideration or object of an agreement is lawful unless it is forbidden by law, is of such nature that if permitted, it would defeat the provisions of any law or is fraudulent or involves or implies injury to person or property of another or would regard it as immoral or opposed to public policy. Again the consideration or object, consideration that is the regard of return or the return which a promiser has from the promisee or one party has from the other party object means the is like a tool or is a, like a medium through which any contract is made or the objective with which it is the purpose is that so consideration or object of an agreement will be lawful only when it is if it is allowed by law. In example, like of meat shop, in certain zones of India, mutton shops are not allowed. But if two parties agree and plans to do trade of flesh in that area then from the beginning only it is forbidden by law so that consideration will not be lawful so in such case agreement will be void again second clause is of such nature that if permitted it would defeat the provisions of any law or is fraudulent If we set down the example that if something new is done over the old existing uh, law, if the new thing is infringing the interest of the already existing law, then again in that case the consideration will be unlawful. Third, involves or implies injury to person or property of another. For example, there were several cases regarding environmental issues in India or worldwide also. In India, like example of Taj Tejim Jhun, there were many factories adjacent to the Taj Mahal which were causing the dilapidation of the marbles of uh, Taj Mahal. So, Naturally enough, those factories were also running based on the agreement of the parties, contracts. But that type of consideration that those parties used for that factory was infringing the environmental interest or the heritage, historical interest of the nation, even the tourist, tourism interest of the tourism revenue, interest of the country. So that type of consideration was infringing the or putting the giving the injury to the other party to the other side property such type of uh, elements will be always unlawful and hence it will be void or voidable again the fourth point court regard it as immoral or opposed to public policy in world, there are many bizarre ways of livelihood, earning livelihood or doing any profession. For example, if two parties or more than two parties agree to do any uh, work or job, which the court 
regard it as immoral ek the example of begging there are many uh, group of ill fated or ill minded people who do the agreement among themselves for begging in some areas sometimes they also move to concerned authorities government authorities even the court also that they should be allowed begging but as it is of a moral nature opposed to public policy also it is of very mean value so in that case this type of uh, consideration of doing such business uh, for livelihood will be totally regarded as immoral by the court and agreement will be unlawful voidable contracts and the definition goes as per section 2i of indian contract act 1872 an agreement which is enforceable by law at the option of one or more of the parties there too but not at the option of the other or others is a voidable contract and that happens when agreement is influenced by no free consent coercion fraud misrepresentation till now we saw the concept of void void contracts are from the beginning only of no significance voidable contracts are or become of no significance at the behest of the aggrieved party for example if two parties agree into any contract or any they do certain task and one party is bluffed by the other party on the grounds of fraud or coercion or misrepresentation or under any pressure so if the other aggrieved party is unwilling to run with that agreement they can withdraw from that and the point from uh, or the position from or the time from where they are retracting themselves from there the contract becomes voidable the essentials of voidable contract or the pillars of voidable contracts are free consent coercion fraud and misrepresentation factors for voidable contracts are free consent coercion undue influence fraud misrepresentation competent one by one we will see all these uh, features or terms which are defined in different sections or respective sections of the indian contract act as per section 14 of uh, 14 of indian contract act consent is said to be free when it is not caused by person as defined in section 15 of indian contract act 1872 and influence as defined in section 16 of indian contract act 1872 fraud as defined in section 17 of indian contract act 1872 misrepresentation as defined in section 18 of indian contract act 1872 mistake subject to provisions of section 2021 22 what is coercion if one party 
threatens the other party to enter into agreement. He does not or he does not put any offensive hurt or uses any weapon but also he does in acting likewise or poses him such that he will really do anything amounting to suicide, murder, culpable homicide, hurt, grievous and likewise any criminal activity. In such case, coercion takes place and the one party is able to subdue the other and get him or it to enter into the agreement. Person is defined in section 15 of Indian Contract Act 1872. It is an act of committing, threatening to commit any act forbidden by law as per IPC 1860. Unlawful detaining or threatening to detain any property to the prejudice of any person, whatever with the intention of causing any person to enter into agreement leads to coercion. Undue influence. Again, here also one party is able to subdue, the other party is able to dominate the will of the uh, aggrieved party. As per section 16 of Indian Contract Act, a contract is said to be induced by undue influence where the relation between the parties are such that one of the parties dominates the will of the other and uses that position to obtain an unfair advantage over other. It happens where there is a relationship very point fiduciary relationship or very close relation which is bonded generally by the high degree of emotion or the aggrieved party is in such a position that he is very much weak physically so that he is not even able to judge what is right or wrong or even reply boldly to the uh, subduer. He is of uh, not so much sound mindset. He is very old, has become weak. He is somewise, somewhat physically challenged also. In such case, one party dominates the will of the weak. Person is in deemed to be in the position to dominate the will of another where he holds a real or apparent authority over the other or where he stands in fiduciary relation to other or where he makes contract with a person whose mental position temporarily or permanently is affected by reason of age, illness or bodily distress. In case contract takes place and transaction appear on the face of it, or on evidence adduced to be unconscionable, the burden of proof that such contract was not induced by undue inference lies on the person who dominates the will of the other. It means that if any case of undue influence occurs and a grief party moves to court, then the burden of proof that he has not uh, it uh, has not done uh, any undue influence or uh, is, uh, has not dominated the will of the other lies on the person, on the culprit. Simply we say lies on the culprit who had really exercised undue influence 
one to his real or apparent or fiduciary relationship. Fraud, a very common term which we use now and then, defined in section 17 of Indian Contract Act. If a party thinks that a certain suggestion as a fact is not true as per his belief, but also then also extends the contract to the other party and ultimately deceives. Here, there is a sense of deceiving. Although one party knows that it is incorrect, but also he or it shows the thing to be correct to the other party who accepts the contract. By active concealment of fact, by one despite of having knowledge or belief of the fact. Promise made unintentionally of performing it. Any other act fitted to deceive. Any such act or omission as the law especially declares to be fraud. So here we see four or five types of uh, conduct of a person which declares him to be fraud. If some person do the active concealment, act concealment means hiding of the fact. For example, if Mr. A, there is Mr. A and there is Mr. B. Mr. A knows that a horse is unsound mindset. But also, he presents the horse to be normal and sells to be, saying that the horse is very cool nature, is of very cool nature and uh, very diligent and obedient also. But uh, in reality, after the sale, it does not happen and B is bluffed. So here, there was an active concealment of the fact that it was an open truth that a horse was mentally unsound but also he sold it. Uh, so this was an act of fraud on part of A. Promise made unintentionally of performing it. If uh, for example again uh, if there is A and B. Mr. B asks Mr. A that if you are going to that office, please drop this letter to that concerned office. B says and A agrees and says okay, he gives his assent that okay, when I will go to that office, I will drop that your letter to the uh, concerned person in that office. He takes it also from the uh, uh, the letter uh, from the B. But when he really goes to the office, he does not think to bring even uh, with him that letter to that office. He leaves that letter uh, in his home only and he goes with the other intention to that office for his own work or just to uh, uh, type pass or whatsoever but he does not take that letter to the uh, respective person to uh, uh, of the of that office in such case it was a promise made unintentionally of performance here he performs the act of fraud any other act fitted to deceive for example if somebody dupes somebody if somebody tells wrong path to somebody there are many our bizarre businesses in the world it suggests that these are uh, uh, done only to deceive the people the such type of works are an act of fraud Misrepresentation. Misrepresentation are not like fraud. 
से आर और कैन बी फ्रॉम द इनोसेंट इंटेंशन ऑल्सो बट इट इज अदर थिंग दैट दे बिकम रॉन्ग आफ्टर वर्ड्स डिफाइंड इन सेक्शन एटीन मीन्स एंड इंक्लूड द पॉजिटिव एजर्शन इन ए स्टाइल नॉट वारंटेड बाई द इंफॉर्मेशन ऑफ द पर्सन मेकिंग इट ऑफ डैट विच इज नॉट ट्रू द ही बिलीव इट टू बी ट्रू इट मीन्स डैट इनोसेंटली एन अफ ऑल्सो वन पार्टी हु इज द कल्पेट कैन एजर्ट समथिंग टू द अदर पार्टी टू दैट टू द एग्री पार्टी बट इट वॉज नॉट इज इंटेंशन रेली but also it is a uh, misrepresentation which will lead to a voidable contract any breach of duty which without intent to deceive gains an advantage of the person committing it or any one claiming under him by misleading another to his prejudice or to the prejudice of any one claiming under him again the same thing causing however innocently a party to the agreement to make a mistake as to the substance of the thing which is the subject of agreement here the uh, core substance of the agreement if it is uh, distorted by the mistake of the fact now uh, however uh, there was no malefied intention innocently also not uh, so this will come under the category of misrepresentation competent mention in section 11 of indian contract act 1872 when a person attains a age of majority he is called to be competent for a contract as per indian law he is of sound mind he is not disqualified by the law to which he is subject for example in india there are many jobs if someone gets accused or convicted or sentenced to certain period or years his jobs get forfeited he is not eligible to enter into any further financial contracts or any contract likewise so is qualified by the law means that only that he should be free from the any limitations of the law so oh, there are some sections which gives us insight about the void and voidable contracts as per section 20 of indian contract act agreement void where both parties are under mistake as to matter of fact sometimes it happens that uh, two parties agree there was no malefied intention among them but also they had the incorrect knowledge of the fact over which they were doing the transaction such agreements are void where both the parties to an agreement are under mistake as to matter of fact essential to the agreement the agreement is void for example a there is there are two persons a and b a agrees to buy from b a certain horse a and b were sitting in a city they were good friends they were having some tea uh, and they were doing gossip they entered into an agreement they thought a thought to buy the horse of b they did the paperwork uh, they do all the attestation uh, from the government stamps uh, or whatever but really when a went to the village where the horse was kept 
he found that house was missing somebody told a that horse died 3 months ago in a flood when there was a flood in that village naturally enough they did the contract in the city they did the paperwork but uh, uh, thinking that their horse was safe and sound in the village which they saw 6 months earlier but within that span of 6 month 3 months before flood had came uh, in in which uh, the horse was dead so this was a mistake of fact so natural enough agreement will be void and uh, a will be liable to get his money back from b uh, so and b is bound to give the money back so sometimes it happens it was not not an act of fraud or misrepresentation but simply it was a matter a mistake as to matter of fact section 24 agreements void if consideration and objects are lawful in part natural enough if consideration that is the reward or return for which a promisor gets from the promise or one party gets from the other if it is un- illegal or unlawful natural enough the agreements will be void if any part of a single consideration for one or more objects or any one or any part of any one of the several consideration for a single object is unlawful the agreement is void Section twenty five of Indian Contract Act: An agreement made without consideration is void unless it is expressed in writing and registered under the law for the time being in force for the registration of documents and is made on account of natural love and affection between parties standing in a near relation to each other, or it is a promise to compensate wholly or in part a person. person who has already voluntarily done something for the promisor or something which the promisor was legally compelled to do unless here it says first para we say it generally happens in case of gift when one party gives for example there is there is one person a the other is b a is अंकल और एनी पर्सन हु इज इन द वेरी क्लोज रिलेशन ऑफ बी और इवन द एडुसरी रिलेशनशिप बट आउट ऑफ नेचुरल लव और अफेक्शन बेनोवलेंस ही इज गिफ्टिंग हिज सर्टन पार्ट ऑफ लैंड और गिफ्टिंग हिज वन वेरी गुड मार्वेलस कार टू बी without any taking money anything in return or any services in return so in such case there is it is being seen that there is no consideration between a and b although there is transaction of the object from a to the b and there is acceptance of the offer from a to b so here now the question arises that how the agreement will be not void it will be lawful and so here it happens that in case of gift it happens it will be expressed in writing registered under the law it will have all the documentation the whatever formalities for the consent transaction between the Uh, a and b will be there it uh, it will be it should be there there will be the registration of documents so if these things are complied then that gift will be valid again the second clause it is a promise to compensate wholly or in part a person who has already voluntarily done something for the promisor again here is also emotional bonding between the two parties for example there is a and b 
once upon a time he was in great distress he was in debt he was in bad health b 10 years before or 5 years before had helped him very much he also managed him to recover the debt for example if there was debt of 1 crore b managed a to recover the debt of 1 crore he was in bad health also great distress he managed to recover from the bad health and the distress of a so here but at that time he did not give anything to b but he promised that if he is capable again and after some years or some days he will natural enough compensate wholly or partly uh, those things to be or in the same manner likewise if he has taken cash then the, then cash is to cash material is to material but or in other form also so here it is again a case of a great emotional bonding of uh, obliged after some years after some year some years a managed to compensate some part of that monetary some parts of some services which b had already offered to him so here it is a agreement made without consideration but it is not void again here also it will be in writing and completely documented and authorized by the law section 26 of indian contract act agreement in restraint of marriage is void if we cannot put conditions or debar somebody from marrying every agreement in restraint of the marriage of any person other than the minor is void you cannot stop anybody from marrying or have any agreement that if you do not marry then i will give you this 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 such type of agreement are void section 27 agreement in restraint of trade is void again you cannot do agreement with any person so that that person does not do that profession occupation or trade every every agreement by which anyone is restrained from exercising a lawful profession trade or business of any kind is to that extent void section 28 agreements in restraint of legal proceedings void again if there is any pendency of suit between two parties one party cannot enter into an agreement that uh, there is a stop uh, undergoing or with the legal proceedings well, uh, you quit from this um, uh, uh, suit or whatever petition this type of agreements will be void every agreement by which any party there to is restricted absolutely from enforcing his rights under or in respect of any contract by the usual legal proceedings in the ordinary tribunals or which limits the time within which he may thus enforce his rights or which extinguishes the rights of any party there to or discharges any party thereto from any liability under 
or in respect of any contract on the expiry of a specified period so as to restrict any party from enforcing his rights. Section 29. Agreements void for uncertainty. Agreement, the meaning of which is not certain or capable of being made certain or void. Example, if A agrees to sell B a hundred tons of oil, so question arises which type of oil? Mustard oil, kerosene oil, petrol oil. There is nothing whatever to show what kind of oil was intended. The agreement is void for uncertainty. So as it was not certain that which kind of oil, the agreement is void. So it is void ab initio. He agrees to sell me all the grain in my granary at Ramnagar. Here all grain. So whatever wheat, pulse, serals, whatever, all come under the category of all. So this is fixed. So there is no uncertainty. So agreement is not void. Third, he agrees to sell to be my white horse for rupees 500 or rupees 1000 here there the statement is dubious at one time he is saying 500 also at one time he is saying 1000 also so there is nothing to show which is of two prices was to be given the agreement is void Section 30. Agreements by way of wager void. Except of horse raising or jackpot, we say, any agreements of the sports like gambling, Tate Bajar, or any speculation, likewise, or what? No suit can be brought for recovering anything unless to be won on any wager. So here we see agreements by way of wager are what? And no suit shall be brought for recovering anything unless it to be won on any wager or entrusted to any person to abide the result of any game or other uncertain event on which the wager is made. Exception in favor of certain prizes for horse racing. This section shall not be deemed to render unlawful subscription or contribution or agreement to subscribe or contribute made or entered into for or toward any plate, prize or sum of money of the value or amount of 500 rupees or upwards to be rewarded to the winner or winners of any horse race. Section 36. Agreements contingent on impossible event void. Contingent agreements to do or not to do anything if an impossible event happens are void. Whether the impossibility of the event is known or not to the parties to the agreement at the time when it is made. For example, if A agrees to pay B rupees 1000 if two straight lines should enclose a space, two parallel lines never intersect each other, they cannot enclose a space. So such agreement is void. If A agrees to pay B if he will, if B will marry A's daughter C, C was dead at the time of agreement, so again the agreement is void. Section 19. Viability of agreements without free consent. So if there is not free consent, agreements are voidable. 
when consent to an agreement is caused by coercion fraud or misrepresentation as already we have seen the agreement is a contract voidable at the option of the party whose consent was so caused it means that the aggrieved party at the wish of aggrieved party the agreement of the contract is voidable section 19a power to set aside contract induced by uh, undue influence here also the aggrieved party can set aside contract induced by undue influence when consent to an agreement is caused by undue influence the agreement is a contract voidable at the option of the party whose consent was so caused any such contract may be set aside either absolutely or if the party who was entitled to void it has received any benefit there under upon such terms and condition as to the court may seem just section 21 says effect of mistakes by law so what is mistakes by law a contract is not voidable because it was caused by mistake as to any law in force in india but a mistake as to a law not in force in india has the same effect as a mistake of fact sometimes two parties make a contract but uh, they do not know some limitation law of the concerned uh, country state or country or uh, take the example of india only uh, some limitation law in india but also they enter into agreement in such case if you do not know the law but enter into any wrong it is not the mistake of law and that contract will not be voidable it will run whatever penalty any liability parties will have to bear it will not be agreement will not be nullified because just by saying that uh, we were not knowing that uh, such, such and such was the rule or such or such were the limits so for example there is not always a official declaration and many times uh, about the traffic rules only if we take the example if i do not wear helmet and uh, traffic police intercept me and puts me fine i said that there was no any official uh, notification not in newspaper also not in the television advertisement also so it was not mistake by law it was my concern so in all cases i will have to pay the fine so section 21 of indian contract act says the same thing section 22 contract caused by mistake of one party as to matter of fact again here also if one party from there is promisor there is promise if promise enters into contract with the promise promisor promise was not uh, aware of all the details of the fact matter of the fact contract is not voidable at the wish of the promise because he said that i was not knowing the mat uh, matter of fact completely after entering into the contract it is not possible to retrace from that or make the contract voidable so all these were the details about and all the prospects about 
wide and whatever contracts thank you everybody